Hello guys, and yes, I am making a part 3 of the all dimensional modeler. This is because I didn't really finish it in part 2, and I would never leave a project unfinished like that. Anyways, when I left off 2 weeks ago, the modeler was full of bugs that made it almost impossible to use. You couldn't change the coordinates without the whole object glitching out. You couldn't delete objects. You couldn't really edit objects, and so on. So I first added a proper way to change coordinates. I added a table with position, size, and rotation values. Except only position could be changed so far. Also, when the position was changed, only the first point would actually be affected, and it would be 40 times more than it should be. This was because when the message was broadcasted to change the coordinates, every single clone would all change the coordinate, making the value many times more than it should be. So I made an extra costume that only the parent sprite could be in, then made it so that it could only change a coordinate if it were on that costume. Then, I decided to add a work plane, since most modeling softwares have them. Because of this, I realized that when rendering objects, it sometimes forgets to actually render the correct one, and ends up rendering an extremely glitchy object. So I spent many hours fixing that. Also, because the work plane was big, and since small sprites can't go past the 480 by 360 border, I had to make a new costume that was huge. I just kept on expanding a rectangle until it was like 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. This broke the coordinate changing system that was based on costume numbers, so I fixed that. Next, I finally decided to add stuff to the previously empty object settings tab. I added options to change its name and dimension number, and later added options to make it editable and view its info. By making it editable, I meant that it would be turned from a preset object to a custom object that could be edited. I also made it so that you could change not only the position, but the size and rotation. Because I was too lazy to calculate the positions of the rotation, I just made it so that it changed the rotation speed for a very short time so the object would rotate to the correct rotation instantly. Then, I decided that the process of deleting objects was too tedious since you had to specify which object to delete every time, so I replaced the original delete object button with an option to show the point numbers, and added it to the object settings tab. I also added the option to delete points and duplicate objects inside the object settings. I also realized that when deleting an object that had other objects after it, the starting and ending points wouldn't update, so I also fixed it. And that is basically all I did in the past two weeks. To finish this project up, I will actually make something with it. You know how the 60 house on the thumbnail from last time was terrible? Well, that is because I kind of just added a bunch of random hypercubes everywhere with no order. So today, I will be making an actual 60 house. By that, I mean a 60 house built for 3D people. I started out by making 4 6 dimensional walls, and a 6 dimensional floor and ceiling. I then added 16 3D walls for 16 rooms, with each third dimensional space of the 60 house having two rooms. Then, on top of the house, I added a 60 square pyramid, which I made by adding a point to a 5D cube. And yeah, that is the house. Though the rooms are a bit plain and there is only one floor, it still has more living space than your average house. So yeah, I put the link to the modeler in the description if you wanted to try it out, and see you next time. Bye.